Hello, this is Dr. Brett Jones, and this is The Source Sessions, education designed to empower your health and your healing. This week, we want to talk about soft tissue inflammation. And forever, it's been considered this horrible thing that we need to decrease. I'm going to give you some information that's going to help break the myths that's associated with ice and compression, and also provide you three strategies to move forward when you do suffer a soft tissue injury. In 1978, Gabe Merkin wrote a book called Sports Medicine. This is the textbook. And in that textbook, he does, this is where he first defined RICE, which is rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Since 1978, that's been the gold standard of things to do when somebody has a soft tissue injury. A lot of people don't know, however, that in 2014 that he refuted that statement that he put down for rice and in an article wrote how ice and compression may actually be retarding the healing process. Now why is this? Well, there's three myths that we need to bust. One is that all inflammation is bad. When you think inflammation, what I want you to start thinking is an innate immune response, meaning that there is a reason that we get inflammation. When you get inflammation, your blood vessels are getting larger. When your blood vessels get larger, it allows for more blood to run through, which allows the macrophages to do what they're designed to do, um, meaning clean up the area, all the other white blood cells that will then go into that area, start to clean it up and get rid of the chemical waste that is associated with that injury. Which brings us to myth number two. Icing will help speed up the recovery time of an injury. All the research that's coming out at this point is saying that ice is actually retarding the healing process. Now why is it? We just talked about when you have inflammation, the blood vessels are getting larger. Well, when you put ice there, it makes the blood vessels smaller, which doesn't allow the, the macrophages in that, again, that innate immune response, those white blood cells to go there and clean, clean it properly. Meaning the insulin growth-like factor, IGF-1, that is produced by the macrophages, isn't getting to do what it's supposed to do. Um, also, is there's, there's research that suggests that you decrease muscle activity, and we know that muscle activity is important for lymphatic drainage. You're not getting lymphatic drainage as well when you use ice. Okay, myth number three is that a use of a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug is safe. So the reason most people would take an ibuprofen following a soft tissue injury is again, they want to decrease inflammation. We also, we just told you why decreasing inflammation with a soft tissue injury is not a good thing. But a lot of people think it's also safe. What if I told you that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are the 15 leading cause of death in America? In 1998, in the American Journal of Medicine, a conservative estimate said 107,000 people per year are admitted to the hospital due to complications, GI complications, so gastrointestinal complications associated with NSAID use. So this is your ibuprofen and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. It's estimated that over 300,000 people have died in the last three decades due to NSAID use. So non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are not safe. Okay, and so we need to stop popping them like it's candy and saying it's okay, I'm just doing this to reduce inflammation, but now we know that soft tissue inflammation is an innate uh, healing response that's gonna help bring the white blood cells where they need to go to clean it up appropriately to actually increase your healing time. So what are three things that you can do about it? So we busted three myths, what are three action steps that you can take? Number one is to listen. So a lot of people are taking things and substances to numb their experience, meaning they're taking pain relievers or you know, muscle relaxants or these anti-inflammatory things, trying to numb their experience of life. And when that happens, you're not able to actually listen to what is going on so you can take appropriate action for your body. After you've actually listened, the next step is to connect. How can I better connect to this body? Because we understand that the body is a self-healing, self-generating thing. And so if we can better connect to that innate intelligence in our body that's already doing the healing, then we're gonna actually experience higher levels of healing. And so one of the ways that I like to do that is chiropractic care. I understand that my body has a nerve system and this nerve system is what connects my brain to my body, my body to brain. And the better able that is able to express its wisdom, that the better I am able to heal. So I like to get my brain and body connected through chiropractic. There's also other things that you can do, but the big thing is how can I better connect to that which is already happening within my body? The last recommendation for you is gonna be what I'm calling pro flow. 
So anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, or anytime you're doing anti something that's gonna do anti-inflammation, like ice, you're decreasing the flow in the body. We want to actually increase the flow. So how can I help generate a proper blood flow through this? And again, part of this is gonna be movement. So a natural movement, not moving into pain, but potentially working within the joint that might be injured, either getting passive range of motion or active range of motion due onto the nature of the injury, can be good for it because we want to help draw more blood flow, get lymphatic drainage, and help the body do exactly what it's already trying to do instead of trying to work against it. So those are our three myths. Those are our three action steps for soft tissue injury, acute inflammation. I hope you learned something uh, from this video. And if you did, I do encourage you to share it with a friend. Post a comment. Tell us what you think about it. Um, we look forward to your feedback. And thank you for joining us. Next time you have a soft tissue injury, think twice before putting ice and compressing that area. All right, much love and appreciation. Thanks for joining the Source Sessions.